Hi, my name is Dean Passion, and I am the Director of Advanced Programs at First RF Corporation. The Navy has asked our company to find a way to put together an active phased array antenna that can go on a small unmanned aerial vehicle or UAV. And um, we've developed a modular and scalable phased array that can be used on these UAVs. And based on that modular design, it can even be scaled up to much larger platforms, including manned aircraft. First RF is an 18-year-old small business that is focused on the development of antennas and RF systems. In our um, first year of operation, we actually set the single year record for the number of SIBR wins, and uh, we actually broke that record a couple times more. Um, we are, however, most well known for the development and production of the antennas that helped save our service members' lives in both Afghanistan and Iraq by um, jamming the remote-controlled um, improvised explosive devices, or IEDs as most people know them. And um, the invention behind that 300 to 1 bandwidth antenna uh, received the Army's Top 10 Inventions of the Year Award. The um, crew antennas that came out of that phase one actually went directly to production from phase one. There was really no phase two program. The need was so great and the design was mature enough. And then First RF has actually produced over a quarter million um, of those types of antennas in our facility in Boulder, Colorado. UAV platforms offer many benefits in providing functions like a communication relay, and the approach allows the Navy to use these UAVs for relays and beyond line of sight data links without the need to go through satellite links that take a lot more hardware and tend to be more costly. Um, if omnidirectional antennas, which you don't need to know any information about pointing, are used in these relays, the data rates are resultantly low. So basically, to get to much higher data rates, we need to go to directional antennas. Historically, somebody might use something like a parabolic antenna for that application, but if you're doing a relay, you've got to have at least two of those antennas one for the receive side of the link, one for the transmit side of the link. And the fact that you need to point them to compensate for the dynamics of the platform means you got to use things like mechanical gimbals. And all of that kind of hardware makes installation on a small UAV difficult, if not impossible. So phased array antennas are the key to meeting the need for the kinds of directional antennas that we're going to need on these small UAV platforms. And they have the ability to quickly repoint the beam for compensation of the dynamic movements of that platform, but also to switch the beam very quickly to go from node to node in an ad hoc networking environment. Um, small UAVs need small phased arrays. So in order to mount on a variety of different platforms, the phased arrays that come out of this program really need to be scalable to shrink for the little ones or potentially grow to the much bigger ones. Um, as an example, a very small UAV might be used for short relays, and that's why it can get by with a smaller antenna. But for a really long relay, you need a large UAV flying at a much higher altitude, and this type of platform is going to need a larger antenna to meet the, the link budget of the longer range link. First RF is using a novel phased array antenna construction approach for this program. Our basic building block we call the Simple Manufacturable Array Technology or SMART card. 
That's all capitals, the word smart, except for the little r. Um, and this smart card contains multiple antenna radiators or elements, antenna elements, along with amplifiers, phase shifters, and control electronics so that the card by itself forms a good chunk of the active electronically scanned array or AESA as we tend to call them. So these smart cards are then um, inserted into a chassis or an enclosure that's built to accommodate them. Each smart card gets an address from the actual chassis slot that it slides into. And that allows distributed computation of the settings for each card during operation. So the master controller only needs to tell the array what direction to point, fade in, fee, L as, whatever. And then each card, by reading its address, it knows where it is in the array, so it can get its offsets for its, that position, and then it calculates the delta Ls and the delta As phase progressions for each element. These smart cards are interchangeable, and any card can be placed in any slot in the enclosure, and that modularity isn't just within a single chassis or an enclosure, um, which would be needed to get 360 degree coverage on a UAV. Generally, we need about four arrays to get 360 degree coverage. But in larger arrays, we might have multiple enclosures for each face, so we can stack them up like bricks and get bigger apertures. Um, there's a really good history uh, at first RF and using these smart cards to build modular phased array arrays. Uh, many different ACEs at first RF use this construction method and arrays using these smart cards actually have thousands of flight hours of background. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the typical SBIR program progression. We are developing this modular and scalable phased array, or we develop this modular and scalable phased array concept in phase one. And work, we're working to build and test prototype hardware during the current phase two effort. So based on strong interest from our sponsor, which is PEOIWS6, the progression beyond the basic phase two effort appears likely. The folks at IWS6 are in regular conversations with PMA266, which actually has cognizance over the MQ8 Fire Scout UAV, uh, you know, to keep them aware of the program and help this move and help move this technology um, towards that Fire Scout platform as the initial target. We've already talked about the scalable design using the modularity of the smart card construction approach. We have not, however, spent much time on the many benefits of active electronically steered array antenna hardware for these types of communication relays. So a higher gain antenna with a directional beam is the key to get the higher data rates. You need big aperture to get big data rates. But because it's a directional antenna with a narrower beam, it needs to be pointed, unlike the lower gain omni antennas that have often been used in the past, and they've been used because they don't need to be pointed. This antenna provides fast beam steering to quickly switch to a new node in the network. It can ping pong back and forth between nodes. The fast steering is also used to compensate for the motion of the dynamic platform, like the MQ8. So at first glass, glance, the motion might seem to be mostly from the orientation of the UAV as it flies, but it turns out that buffeting and vibration also require pointing compensation. Um, when the antenna apertures are relatively small, the beam with the antenna is relatively wide, so you don't need to do too much compensation for those things like wind gusts and vibration. But on the bigger platforms with the bigger apertures, the beam width narrows, and this starts to get to be a big deal. All UAV platforms and even manned aircraft are targeted as possible hosts for this type of phased array solution 
but the MQ-8 Fire Scout, as I've already mentioned, has been selected as the initial, initial test and demo vehicle. So that transition path using the platform managed by PMA-266 is somewhat laid out. But this is actually a great place um, to uh, look for other transition opportunities. So if you see a benefit to this type of phased array antenna system that supports high data rates, is modular and scalable, has fast beam steering and so on, um, if that might meet the needs you know, of some application that you know, please definitely let us know. While the size of an antenna is based more on physics than on the actual technology, unlike integrated circuits that keep getting smaller as time goes on, smaller antenna systems are still desired. So to keep the performance up as we try and squeeze the size down, um, at First RF we tend to use more efficient power amplifiers, lower noise figure receive amplifiers, and lower loss components in the construction. And this application that we've been talking about is for a communication relay or a data link relay, the market for these kinds of um, phased array systems does include other applications like radar and other various transmit receive needs. These types of arrays can be used pretty much in any frequency band. And while the focus, as you see on the slide, is, is on arrays from S band down up through the millimeter wave bands, we have built phased arrays down through UHF for things like synthetic aperture radar and comms, and we've built antennas all the way down to VLF. Um, as the interface to these antennas becomes more common and standard, I feel that this type of modular and scalable solution will also become more common, more interchangeable. Um, the legacy approach of starting every phased array design from scratch, like we've tended, like we've tended to do in the past, is going to move towards a more quick response, scalable, and flexible construction, like you see here. Commercial communication systems are going to need um, directional antenna arrays of this type, and that need is driven both by High data rates where you want a bigger aperture, which means an error beam and you got to point it, but also spectrum reuse, kind of like cellular phone system. We want an error beam so it covers less space and we can reuse that spectrum for others. On the DOD side, there's a similar need for the high data rates, but the directional beams are driven more by the need for security and interference mitigation. But whether it's the DOD or a commercial application, it needs a quick beam steering antenna to compensate for the dynamics of a mobile platform or to quickly switch from node to node in an ad hoc networking environment. I want to thank you for listening to this presentation, and I'm happy to be able to talk about this innovative AESA antenna system that supports communication relays at high data rates. First RF is a small business with a tremendous ability to meet the toughest antenna challenges. And so Ian and Ian Rumsey or I listed on the chart here will be happy to talk with you further about any opportunities for the use of these types of modular phased arrays that we can scale to meet your need. Thank you very much.